Molly, it's like a song. You can hear the piano, but it's not about the piano. It's about the song. It's not about the ingredients. It's about the mole. Hi, I'm Saul Montiel. I am from Hidalgo, Mexico, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make mole poblano. Mole, it's very special on our community because that's when we celebrate anything. If you get married, we make mole. Baptismo, we make mole. Quinceañera, we do mole. First, we're gonna start by cooking the chicken and using the chicken stock for our mole. We're gonna start with water. And when it comes to mole, we typically use turkey back home in Mexico because that's very cost effective. It takes a little bit longer to cook, but that's the main component. A little bit of celery, carrots, onions. These ingredients are classic, and this is the best way to make any kind of stock. Fresh bay leaves, of course. In Mexico, we add yerbabuena, which is very similar to peppermint. I'm gonna cook this for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It all depends on the size of your chicken. Now we're gonna start making some mole. There's two types of mole, Oaxaqueño or Poblano. Poblano, it's more like me, sweet and tasty, and the Oaxaqueño is more sexy and spicy, also like me. <laughs> this is my recipe. Everybody in Mexico have their own recipe. We start with some manteca, pork lard. A lot of people might think, oh, but you know, lard is so unhealthy. No, it's not. This is natural fat. The reason why we fry ingredients like this is just to get the flavors out of it. I'm gonna fry it separately because each ingredient cooks differently. Even though we're gonna make a sauce, we're gonna use this oil to cook the mole. Oh, my beautiful olla de barro. The shape of this, kind of pushes the sauce to be in one spot, so it'll be easier for you to stir. If it's wider, you're gonna be like, oh, crazy. In here, it's just one spot. We're gonna start with the peppers. Poblano pepper, mulato, and pasilla. The difference between those peppers are spiciness, texture, and color. You see how they are dehydrated? If you overcook this, they will burn and taste really bitter. This is the pasilla pepper. Uh, it's mild, but it's full of flavor. I want all these flavors of the chili to stick on the lardo. Color of the oil is gonna change. That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna add the mulato. It's a uh, ripe poblano pepper. This mole is not really spicy. It adds the pepper flavor with a little bit of, of, of sweetness at the same time. Now I'm gonna do with the ancho, which is a younger poblano pepper. We're talking about mole oaxaqueño. That's when you add more peppers in here, more spicy. Now we're gonna add some chicken stock to this. We're making a sauce. So it needs to be super soft. So these are the, the cacahuates, right? Peanuts. We just want like, like a nice brown color. Peanuts, yes, is one of the ingredients that makes mole mole. My mom used pickens. I love pickens, man. But you know, in here, I want to make it easier and simple for you. Now when we do the almonds, same thing, same process. And most of the ingredients that people share on their mole recipe are spices and nuts. You know, people do beef with mole, do turkey with mole, but the common thing between all moles is the nuts and the spices. Now you just add raisins to add more sweet, the pumpkin seeds to add a nutty flavor. Mole, it's, it's a mix of the two worlds, Aztecs, Mayas, and the Spanish. We mix their stuff with our stuff, and we make mole. <laughs> and now the apple, this is gonna add another level of sweetness. Making mole requires a lot of patience. And this is why grandma makes the best mole because they have the whole patience in the whole world. Now let's remove the apples. Now they're plantains. And it has to be ripe because it's gonna be sweet and also it's gonna be easier to make it into a paste. And now the galletas marias. This is like a sugary vanilla cookie. If you don't have these cookies, use bread. They're gonna give that consistency and also volume and texture. My favorite tortillas in New York City, tortillas chinantla. This is also gonna give texture, color to our mole. I want them to be a little bit crispy, just to get the flavor corn out of them. Black pepper, cinnamon, coriander seeds, white sesame seeds. So the heat, I turn it off because these are delicate ingredients and I don't want to burn them. Here are most of my ingredients for our mole. Mole, it's like a song. You can hear the piano, but it's not about the piano. It's about the song. It's not about the ingredients, it's about the mole. Does that make sense? It's grinding time. Metate is an Aztec and Maya blender. And now we're gonna blend all these ingredients and make mole sauce. People don't use it anymore. I just text my mom and She's like, you nuts. Today, I'm gonna use the metlapil, my metate, to make the best mole. I'm gonna start with the peppers. Normally, you do this blending on, uh, on your knees, because like that, you put more pressure on the metlapil. Before I put any other ingredients, I have to make sure all these peppers into a paste. I'm gonna add a little bit of ajonjoli, which is the sesame seeds. 
and the uh, pumpkin seeds. Oh, see, it's looking like a mole now. I'm gonna add a little bit of raisins, the best tortilla, plantains. Apples, and some almonds, some cookies. So by adding all the ingredients together, we're gonna accomplish the texture that we're looking for. So we got all the ingredients in there. All right, it looks like we're almost there. Texture, basically, it has to be smooth. And it has to be like a paste. And this is my mole poblano. So almost ready, few more ingredients, and we'll be there yet. So we got our mole paste already done. Now we're gonna add two key ingredients on the mole poblano. When making a mole poblano, it's very important that you add chocolate. That's one of the characteristics of mole poblano. I like to use chocolate Ibarra because it's from Mexico. It has like a crystallized sugar inside. So it's sweet, but it's not that sweet. Chocolate is indigenous from Mexico. So something that we Mexicans give to the world. Piloncillo, uh, this is a raw sugar cane. So this is unprocessed sugar. So now for our mole, we're gonna use a little bit of lard. This mole paste is weighed a lot. So I'm just gonna do two big spoons. This mole is gonna triple the size because it's so thick that we're gonna add the chicken stock. I want to keep cooking the ingredients that I cook and that will be the mole, it will be more richer, more flavorful. Chicken stock. You wanna add a little bit as you go. And now you're gonna watch a mole being born. And why you gonna do this? Because you don't wanna have a really thick mole or really loose mole. Comprende or no comprende? Okay, so you see the consistency? It needs to be a little bit more darker. How do you make it darker? By cooking it longer and adding chocolate. So now you wanna cook this at very low heat for maybe two, three hours. The longer you cook, the more rich mole you're going to have. Before you add the chocolate and the sugar, Try it, why? Because remember you have apples, you have sweet plantains, which are sweet. So this is perfect. It needs a little bit of sweetness. So we're gonna put some chocolate. The nuts are there for sure. Mole poblano to me, it's not spicy. A little bit of sugar cane, because I don't want it to taste like sweet from a chocolate. I want it to taste sweet from all the ingredients being mixed. You see how it's easy to stir? because the shape of the pot makes it so much easier. All right, guys, the flavors are there. Now we're gonna cook this for two hours. I can't wait to put this together. This is just amazing. So we just cooked this mole for two hours. We cook it at very low heat and it looks delicious. Now we're gonna assemble. When you go to a party, a Mexican party, they give you a piece of the white meat and the dark meat. Ton, 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 ton. Lasa mole. Oh my gosh. Is this enough mole or what? And we're gonna finish it with a little bit of sesame seeds. Gracias, Aztecas, Mayas. There's only one way to find out if it's good or not. This is my knife and this is my fork. So the knife, you grab it like that. <laughs> I can see the Mayans, the Aztecs, being so happy after trying this mole. Delicious. I can taste the nuts, the plantains, the almonds, the peppers, the chicken, everything. Everything pays off. All the hard work right here. This makes me feel like I'm in a quinceañera or in a wedding. This music pumping, bah, bah, bah. And you eating mole, drinking whiskey, tequila, mezcal. Celebrating, happiness, this is happiness. It's incredible what food does to people, huh? It makes people happy. My favorite memory of mole, it's seeing one table with my grandparents, my uncles, my cousins, my mom. This takes me to that where everybody was so happy. And mole, to me, means happiness.